Welcome, beautiful beings, to the Full Time Kid Podcast. This is your boy Juante, and this is the first ever YouTube episode. I'm trying to think real hard and not messing up the pronunciation of what we're doing here. But this is a video this time. It's not a podcast like my other episodes, and that's that's a big milestone for me. You know, I never thought I'd be on recording myself because it is kind of awkward. And but the thing is, though. I like making comedy when that happens, that the awkward stuff. And sometimes it comes out too awkward. I'm one of those that whenever I'm in pain, I laugh. And so <laughs> I, always, that, I forget why I learned this saying from, but it's better to, to laugh than cry. And I, I really like that. So I am real big about that. And as you can see, I'm doing that right now. Anyways, welcome to the show. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel. We talk about all things because I am the full-time kid and whatever comes about my life and I find interesting to learn about, I go do more research about it. And I bring on those people that I have unique conversations with. There's a one person I have in mind right now. He probably doesn't even know that I know uh, that I know of him, even though we're in the same class. I do that often too. I'm a people watcher. And <laughs> um, one thing in the class, though, he brought up was about the politics of Hong Kong. And that's something I'm kind of interested in. So, well, not kind of, I am interested in it. It's just something I don't know about. So, full-time kid is full effect right now. So, anyways, this is pretty much an episode intro about my move here. Because I did move from a different state. I'm currently in New York now. Woo-woo! New York! New York! So, sorry, I was trying to do that. This guy's accent while we were going to the Brooklyn Bridge the other day. My sister came to visit me. And so, this guy was doing a weird accent. Not weird accent, but... He was a salesman trying to sell his products on the bridge. Because, you know, tourists go there every day. And my sister wanted pics. So, I was like, man, uh, let's just go out there. There's so many scenes out there, you know, you can get a pic from. Anyways, we went there... And he was just saying, best prices of New York. Of New York. So, here I am in New York. And I come here to mostly explore. I was given the opportunity to come here. It was either here or Hawaii. And I chose here because they had a better school system. I didn't hear much reviews. I have a friend over there right now. She was telling me it's better to come here for schooling. You know, feed two birds with one hand. And I always like doing that. If I can do something new and, and take care of checking the boxes of a lot of other topics or things that I want to do at the same time, I'm going to do it. So New York was one of those things. And it was a new place. And I've been here before and I really loved it. And um, they had a school here that I wanted to go to. Even though we'll get to that, I did change my, my uh, major. So I might actually transfer again next fall. I'm going to see how this this whole year plans out. And uh, maybe I get my bachelor's degree here and then later transfer. Who knows? Uh, right now I'm really enjoying where I'm at. I'm learning a lot. And especially my new major, which is journalism. Even though, to be honest with you, I don't plan on doing anything with the bachelor, this bachelor's degree. And... Um, but it is something, a skill set that I would like to learn for my travels because that's really what I want to do. I just want to travel. I want to travel the world. Have a have an adventure. I don't know if you know any adventure stories. <laughs> the Hobbit. Um, another one is, um, what is that? I don't want to say Kite Runner. That's not the right one. I, I mean, I'm just thinking of Kite Runner right now because me and my roommate, Bestie, we're about to go watch 
the Broadway show about the Kite Runner. So that's probably what came to my mind. Uh, it's not really that much of an adventure. It's kind of a dark story. If you haven't watched it or, or read it, I recommend it. It's uh, something I, I read whenever I was in English, I believe, in junior high. Some people read that in, in English. Not my bad, not English, uh, history. So I thought that was unique. Never thought that would be something, but yeah, apparently it is. I mean, I, I did recommend watching the City of God in my world history class. And um, it has nothing to really do with learning about history, but it does have something to do with how um, uh, life is over there in Brazil. So highly recommend that. Anyways, adventurers. I love adventure. I love going out there and explore New York. There's so much things to do here that there's people like my cousin. He literally lives in Long Island and there's still things he still hasn't, you know, uncovered here in New York, whether it's food, shows, um, new projects that's coming around, museums. There's just so much things to do here. Even a walk in the park is a magical thing. I mean, one thing I was talking about my sister is the the dogs of New York. They're on a whole different level over here. There's just there's just so many different unique dogs. I would not ever expect so many types of dogs to come out. Uh, <laughs> they all have their unique characters. I mean, the, the, I saw a hairy dachshund that had the pattern of a raccoon tail. I, I've never seen that kind of stuff, you know? That's why I said the city of New York got dogs of New York. I mean, it's just it's just an amazing, amazing experience that I'm having right now. And I'm excited for what is this to come and all the people that I'm meeting right now and I'm going to meet in the future. So, welcome to the show. Welcome to my new spot. Happy to have you guys here. Today, I wanted to talk about this book. Now, the first ever podcast I ever did was a review, um, part of a review of The Denial of Death. And I thought it was fitting because I did say on that podcast that I will review the whole book. And now, this is a great opportunity because it's the first episode I'm posting on YouTube and re-recording it in video. Of course, that makes sense because we're going to post it on YouTube. But anyways, I thought it was fitting because it's the first. And so... Today, we're going to review the book as a whole and what I think. Now, of course, don't take this literally and, and take it for a fact. This is just my opinions about what I felt when I read the book. Of course, I read a little summary, a wiki summary about what the author's true intentions were. And, um, of course, I perceived it a little different at the end. And that's just my opinion and that's why I want to go with and I've, um, I've also, you know, listened to a lot of other podcasts about this topic and uh, the anxiety of death and how each of us have our own way of handling that. But it's a coping mechanism, of course, right? And one thing that really caught my attention is the, the heroic aspect of people's lives. Everyone has to be uh, this hero of their own story. Whether it's to um, escape death, immortality, become more than just this human body. It's just uh, an amazing way of life, in my opinion. Of course, you know, it has, it's a double-edged sword, is how you see it. Some people go way beyond it and force their ideas up on, down each other's throat about how their life is the best and we should all follow it this is the perfect way this is god's way or whatever way you want to say you know because the, the idea of heroism uh, you know it doesn't it does come from you know or forms of religious um, views so there's something that there that um i wanted to catch up with because that it was mentioned and that kind of took my um my thought process a little differently because i did I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did believe in that. In that uh, let me take this back. I was certain in my own life that in a way I wanted to be more than just this. And that is true. That is still true. That is still true. I, I truly believe that mo all the energy in my body 
will disperse and become I don't know more grass uh, or I don't know part of a planet part of a star part of something even more strange than what you and I perceive as normal in this universe that we believe all the laws in of course everything has to be measured in a way to for scientific hypothesis or proof right now I'm just rambling but let's, let's go back into what I was talking about because the denial of death really opened my eyes about my own coping me mechanisms of death because that's something that you know I thought about and I in my own mind I think I'm okay with it but I never know I never know if once the, the time comes that death actually shows up to my doorstep and tells me, hey, it's time to hand the keys over. The ride is over. And it's like, oh, okay, okay. Just, I don't know what, what response I might have. If there was something on the, uh, an option to live more for a sacrifice, I don't know if I'll take it. Now, right now, I can say that yes, I accept it. I have no regrets and uh, everything was a pleasure and on top of that there's a part of me that thinks that maybe I can take control of this but at the same time how much is my own free will an illusion I have no clue um, I'm just a student right now as this is why this is called a full-time kid this is just different outlooks different opinions different ideas different philosophy you know opinions and I will not like to be a person that shuts the door on everything and just be close-minded. I try my best not to do that. Of course, there are some things that I do and as I get older or in hindsight, I look back at it and say, oh, man, I should have handled that differently. Of course, you know, that comes with some regrets, but at the same time, you know, there's an argument that can be made, well, uh, you never know what the other coin, the other side of the coin might do. At the same time, there's a part of me that says, oh, well, wouldn't we end up the same place that we are now? I have no clue. Um, I would like to believe that everything happens for a reason. But at the same time, we can also say that some of those reasons are not as significant as it is, as it is for someone else's life. You know, something that might blow a leaf in your universe might actually be a tsunami in someone else's. It's all opinionated, but it does matter in a way. It does matter to an extent. Sometimes not that grand. And it probably does nothing at all. Anyways, I want to go back into the book because something that really grabbed my attention was that there are certain things in our lives that we have no explanation for and whether or not it's because we do not understand it very well in a scientific way where it can be measured with the equipment that we have or it's just pure magic and what always people always say that I've hear and all these other shows or podcasts that I listen to is just magic and science that we don't quite understand and I'm not talking about stuff in a physical form. I'm talking about stuff now with this book and the mental state, the psychic state. Because there are certain, certain things that science doesn't really do for our psyche. Because it's something that is not very logical in a sense. Like in my opinion. Uh, relationships are not very logical. I just cannot imagine um, if you're speaking in an evolution term, how how is that very beneficial in the long term? And but at the same time, there's a part of me that's not in an evolutional state that believes that that's something very magical, and it's it's so it shows unconditional love. You know the ups and downs, and it's not based on. Um, I always say an eye for an eye, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. It's not based on that. It's based on something, in my opinion, more magical and unconditional love that cannot be taken. And it's just pure. 
Now, my mom still liked to see the other point of view of it. But coming back to the story, because I'm, I'm always getting off topic, right? Because there's so many avenues, you know? As a kid, you want to, you see something shiny, you go look at it. You see something else, you go look at it. It's part of life. And uh, <laughs> don't beat yourself up for it. It is something that, um, that we need to realize about ourselves in a way. At the same time, it gives us opportunities to explore other aspects. So, shout outs to those people that know what I'm talking about. Because um, can, I can ramble on about other stuff all the time and uh, get lost in the sauce. But at the same time, this episode is brought to you by the denial of death. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about it. And I, I really want to talk about this concept about how... Sometimes philosophy and this idea of God really helps our understanding of the universe. And to, to put this in, the, in, the, in a simpler way, this book explains something that really caught my attention about psychiatry. Now, psychiatry, it can help you. And I'm not saying don't go to it, and I'm not saying um, it's a it's a, a false thing, and uh, it, it it's not it has no evidence behind it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying it has its limits. It has its limits of how much you can help, and and whether or not that's for you to say, for me, I quite understand what this book is going, well, where it's coming from, because. It's, it can only explain things in a logical sense, but it has, it has a limit to certain aspects of life that, that there is no explanation for at this very moment. And therefore, the idea of having philosophy comes in hand. And I really enjoy that. That's something that was emphasized in this book. Because there are certain people out there that shame people about their belief system. Now, there's nothing wrong with the belief system. What's, what I believe is wrong is whenever somebody is trying to force their beliefs on someone else and, and shaming them for believing anything else. That's where I have an issue. But there is evidence, and this book backs that up. It backs the idea that there is something there with believing in something bigger than yourself that really helps the whole. It really helps your, your thought process, your psyche, and in, in many ways your body. The will to survive is increased in a way. Not saying that it's the only way, but it does help. It does help. It helps uplift your spirits. And and there's there's so many people now I don't know their names because man they got some long names and uh, there's some names I don't use on an everyday basis but there are people out there physicists scientists whatever 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 you believe is someone that you is highly respected in the in that department there are people there that say the same thing that I'm saying is that they this idea of a higher being or a higher power or this idea of a god really comes in hand when everything is said and done. An explanation is not necessary. It's just a pure, sheer will of exploration. It gives you that little push to ex explore boundaries more. Because everything is not, it's not completely, utter, utterless chaos. You know, there might be some order there, there might not. But at the same time, I'm really a believer about how how much you put the word and action into something, the more it becomes your reality. And I believe um, whatever you do with your life, you have a say to it. And at the same time, there is a, a little bit of, of destiny within it as well. And... People can have a debate about that, but I think it's a flow between both. And in a way, that's what life is about. You know, you, in my opinion, you have a, a beginning and an end, but everything in between is pure 
spontaneity. And that's what's so beautiful. And that's what I enjoy about this life. Is that wherever I go through, it's my choice if I want to go down into a dark place or up in a high place. And that's opinionated too. My, high, my, my dark and my light places are different from someone else's. But it is a choice. Because there are some peoples that have regret. And that's something I learned too. To to really accept. That instead of not accepting the idea that I have regrets. There are certain things I, I wish I can take back. What I said or the action I did. And the difference is, is I made my peace with it. But would I go back and do it? Probably not. If I had a time machine. But at the same time, I do have regrets, and that's something I must sit with and really take in so I can have empathy into a, a different level than what I experienced before. Because that's something that I, I feel people, you know, not people, but myself, is that I want to have a deeper connection with people and certain stuff that I don't quite understand yet. And so I can understand where they're coming from, but also still form my own opinion and not be peer pressured into an idea. But if I don't understand the idea, I will never understand where they're coming from. And therefore, I don't have a, a real opinion about it. And I do a discernment to myself and to whoever I'm talking to, whether it's a friend, a family member, because I really do want to understand. It's just something that whether I don't find interest in and it's because I don't understand <laughs> anyways oh sorry anyways going back to the book I really enjoy the book because um, it really goes through the aspects of how we in a way sabotage ourselves through the acceptance of death the anxiety of death and how, in a way, we cope with it. And everyone has their own coping mechanism. And for me, once I, once I read that book, I started reflecting more about my own death and how much I really felt about it. And how much, once I accept it and know that that's my, my end. And it is not to say that that is the end. Because, again... Because I accepted the idea, I feel that anything but up is from there. And my, my personality is really being tested about how I, how I receive this information and how much I put emphasis on my own life or whether it's something to live for or to die for because you can go into a dark place with these with that idea you know does things have a meaningful um, reason to to live and I really believe that you make what whatever is given to you because there's a certain part of me that doesn't believe in destiny. But there is also a certain part of me that does. And that's a, that's the contra, what people call it, a duality. And that's there's a bunch of dualities. There's a bunch of contra contradictions between a choice of doing this or doing that and how it affects this person or how it affects that person. And... But that's what's so fun if you want to look at it that way or sad. And it's really how you see it. It's really how you see it and how much uh, you make up the opportunity that has been given to you. Because one thing that a person, a scientist or a physicist that said, he said that really touched me was how being grateful for what is. And to me, once you start being grateful for how everything is, like this opportunity that we get to experience life here on Earth, everything will not seem such like a, a big deal in a way. You have more peace in your life. Be more relaxed about certain things. 
materialistic ideations and stuff will go away. Of course, we do live in a in a world that requires the dinero and requires us to to add to our community in order to be protected or provided for and everyone has to do their part you know again you scratch my back I scratch yours but in my opinion once you realize that this opportunity it, it might be the greatest thing that we might ever experience I believe you have a choice in how you're going to look at it, right? You can look at it in a different light. Or you can think of it in a dark situation. And this book really likes to grab on the idea about how it, the idea of a God really inspires people more. Or not even a God. I'm, I'm saying God because it's it's like a general word to use when we're describing something that has a greater power than our understanding. And let's just call it, I don't know, the, uh, the source. The source of all creation. Yeah, it's a, it could be energy, it could be a humanoid, who knows. But let's just call it the source. The source is what strives people to push forward. The will to survive, to to go beyond the the what was thought to be boundaries or limitations, and really question the idea of our life and how things works here in the universal laws, and with that comes information, information about ourselves and how much how much we can change our ideas about ourselves and who we truly are whether we just this body this consciousness this energy whether we can be more or less it's really in my opinion again how much effort you put into believing in those aspects will we determine where you go in my opinion if I if you want to be a plant or you believe this is it then that's awesome make the most of it enjoy life and be part of the cycle if there's individuals there that want to be more put effort into that put your energy into that who knows maybe you create AI you transfer consciousness or maybe you um, do something like these people in I think it's Tibet you know, they, they're called the rainbow bodies. They literally, their body turned into a, a rainbow. How much is that as fact? I don't know. There is articles out there that people can read about that it's not, it's not a, um, something that can be hidden. It's, a, it's a documented evidence about it, about these monks. Their bodies shrink and then eventually some of them disappear, some of them don't and the rainbows come up around their hut but I don't know that's something I want to go see um, on my travels I want to go over there in those areas to see if there's something different and their practices and what they do and maybe that's another opportunity another way of, of experiencing life beyond this this body or it can just be energy in the soil. It's just, I'm really big about the idea about how much energy and effort and sheer will that you put into something can really change the way you live on. And again, how much of our of ourselves is actually living on? I have no clue. The same argument can be made whenever you transfer a consciousness into a robot. How much of that is actually us? How much of that is going to be really something that carries on into the next life? That's all for argument's sake. I remember talking about this with my friend Kareem. Uh, we actually had a podcast not too long ago. But whenever we watch this movie, Chappie, Chappie 
had the very same thing that I think will happen later on in the future. And I don't know if I'll be alive for this, but I know it's going to happen. I have a great, a great idea that in my, the capability of transferring consciousness into an artificial, artificial thing, something like, like AI and a robot. And how much of your consciousness can be transferred and how much of that is actually you in the long run? I have no clue. But it's the same concept, right? If you really want to put your energy into that to make yourself experience life longer and this and this reality, or you can you can put your energy into something else, or you can just believe this is it and that's it. And your energy disperses. There's no right or wrong. As long as you treat people equally, with respect and dignity, it has nothing to do with religion. And not forcing anyone to say their way is right, their way is wrong. And that's the biggest message that I want to leave here today. So, again, this is the Full Time Kid Podcast. This is our first episode. And I hope it was nice and sweet. It's anything but short. Uh, eventually we'll get even to longer topics when we start having more people coming on i would love to do a book review once in a while right now i'm reading uh something from my school oh man definitely this probably will be the next episode to be honest with you guys it's about media and how much of the media and i'm not talking about media as like people talking on the news and i'm talking about the medium like the, the the stuff that they share media on and how much people actually have control over that and how much they share and how much that impacts our cultural lives and our own lives and as a whole. And that's something that I want to share and I share the book as well with you in case you wanted to read it yourself. But that'll be the next episode. And um, again, thank you for tuning in. Subscribe and I'll leave a like as you say goodbye and till next time xoxo times infinity yo and i'll catch you on the next one forget what you told forget what you know it's time to let go and go with the flow i'm a witness no more fixes no more fixes straight up listen pay attention no resentment no mission yeah it's a choice but remember it's all written have faith in the source I drive that intuition and you'll be alright. Just be you.